This is Akashwani. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on successful launch of new navigation satellite, significance of Navic, navigation with Indian constellation. The participants are Bimon Basu, science and technology expert, and Om Vesh Upadhyay, Akashwani correspondent. India has developed an indigenous version of the navigation system which is similar to GPS and is on par with navigation systems like GLONASS by Russia and Galileo by the European Union. Today morning, the GSLV on its 15th flight carried the navigation satellite NVS-01 from the second launch pad at the Satish Dhawan Space Center. And to discuss on this in detail, we are joined by Mr. Biman Basu. Welcome to the program, Mr. Basu. Thank you. So, Mr. Basu, in order to bring a general understanding regarding the topic and how significant it is, can you please explain to our listeners what the navigation with Indian constellation NAVIC is? You see, these days, satellite-based navigation is a very common thing. But not many countries have their own satellite systems. India is proud to have its own satellite system for navigation. And the one which was launched today is one of them. Now, the satellite navigation system, it makes possible, you know, the location and understanding of areas on the Indian landmass and around India through satellite, which is made available to the general public in most cases. Satellites give a much detailed data on landforms and many other things compared to, you know, landmass studies. It provides a very uh, detailed uh, account of the sources, land resources and, and other positions on land which can be seen from space. Now the satellite based system has one advantage that it can look at a very large area from space which is not based, which is not possible through land based studies. So that's why these days most countries are looking for satellite based systems to understand their land and, and can develop and design programs to utilize the land. And you very rightly pointed out that the successful launch of a new navigation satellite is indeed a significant achievement. So whenever we talk about the applications and what will be the key benefits of NAVIC, can you please uh, share with our listeners that whenever we talk about the contribution of NAVIC to improving navigation accuracy and reliability, especially in areas such as uh, the defense sector for Indian military, also in terms of challenging terrain or limited ground infrastructure to get a better understanding in times of disaster. Can you please uh, shed some light on the key benefits and applications of NAVIC for India? See, the new satellite is specifically designed for India. Okay, so it, it is basically working on the Indian system and uh, it has is working on the details of the Indian landmass and the area around India. Because this is specifically to serve the Indian people or the requirements of the Indian government or Indian space mission and organizations like that. Absolutely. And when we talk about what are the new technological interventions or innovations that were integrated in this mission, speaking after the successful launch event of NVS-1, ISRO Chairman S. Somnath highlighted the significance of the navigation system that India launched today and also what are the new technological interventions in this that contributed to the success of this mission. He said, Today the Navic satellite NVS-01 is the second generation of uh, navigation satellite with the uh, additional capabilities that we have already brought into this satellite constellation where we make the signals more secure, we made more a civilian frequency band L1 and also introduced our atomic clock which is uh, designed and developed by Space Application Center ISRO. And this is one of the five series of satellites in this new configuration that are to be launched. So I would like to thank all those people who worked to make this satellite as well and make this mission really a grand success. Now the satellite is in a geotransfer orbit. Now we, the satellite team will take over and now we'll do the rest of the functions of circularizing it and placing it at the right place in the position where it is intended to be. So I wish all the very best to the satellite team for subsequent missions. Mr. Basu, can you please share with our listeners what are the new incorporated interventions in terms of technology and innovation in this mission and especially about the indigenous atomic clock which was part of the NVS-01? Yes, you know, this satellite for the first time used a rubidium atomic clock. See, most earlier satellites or atomic clocks were based on cesium. Now, cesium is an element. Rubidium is also an element. Now, this rubidium atomic clock was developed in India. 
by the Space Application Center and uh, it gives much better reliability than the CISM clock. So that way, this is a major advancement that India has made in satellite navigation system. All right. And now when we discuss the technological strength of NAV IC and what were the new indigenous interventions in that, here in the conversation, I also want to bring a short comparison between the globally recognized GPS and India's own NAV IC. And even you know that there would be a query among the public that which is better. So as you earlier said that there are limited usage of NAV IC till now because there are more improvements to be made. But still to highlight the technological strengths and limitations. Can you please share an overview of NAV IC in comparison to GPS? So GPS, you know, it is based on a large number of satellites. Because, you know, for any work involving satellites, you have to access to at least three satellites at the same time. And that is possible only when there is a large number of satellites in space in a system where you can access at three satellites at the same time. So that is the requirement because the GPS is a very general purpose application which anyone can use. Now this new satellite that India has launched, now this is not of that kind. It is a very specified, at the moment it is a very specific satellite which has been developed for a specific purpose. It is not for general use at the moment. Maybe its future scope will be advanced or expanded. Then things will change. Absolutely. So, and uh, to mention here that in comparison, GPS and NAV IC, they are completely different set of satellite network where yes, yes. NAV IC works on seven satellites and GPS have more than 30 uh, satellites. NAV IC focuses more on the regional navigation system of India. So among the key uh, specifications, uh, Mr. Basu, what we right now know is that NAV IC is double accurate than GPS. That means where GPS can provide you data of accuracy that ranges between 10 meter to 20 meters. NAV IC can provide you data that is more accurate in about 5 meter to 10 meter. So that is pretty unique fact. But to get a general understanding here, you are saying that it is not for general use. So for public out there, for the listeners, what they can decipher with it that they can't use it more like GPS and it is more of a limited and a specific navigation system that India has launched today? Well, at the moment, moment, this system, the new newly launched satellite, it doesn't have a system program which can make it usable from a common mobile, anyone's mobile. It's not like that. Maybe in future, it will be developed further so that the mobile user can access it. At the moment, it cannot be done. Okay, So so it is not for general purpose application at the moment. Okay, so what we can understand here is that it is in a very initial stage and there are more scope to their usage and for sure we can use other navigation more like GPS in future. Yes, because you know, even now that we have at the moment seven satellites in the Indian regional navigation satellite system, their their use is very restricted. It cannot be used by everybody. Absolutely. So now, Mr. Basu, I want to talk about what is the road ahead? What future developments or advancements can we expect to see in the NAV IC system? And how do you think it will further revolutionize navigation and positioning services for India and the Indian subcontinent? So again, at the moment, this system is not or cannot be used by an ordinary mobile phone. So when can be developed further so that any mobile user can access it, then it will be much more useful. So at the moment, the signals from this satellite can only be received by very specified receivers and the general public cannot access it and use its data. So development will definitely take place and it will be developed further, but at the moment cannot use its signals. Sharing the details of the way forward of ISRO and how the scientists are continuously involved in a new process altogether to bring laurel to the nation in the science sector. ISRO Chairman S. Somnath also briefed on the major missions that India will take over after NVS-1 and what is the update on all that he said. The Navi constellation is something that is very crucial for this nation to have a regional navigation constellation and it must be made to fully operational status. It must be put to use for various applications that we already started to work on. I take this opportunity to tell you that we are going to make this NAVIC system fully functional and operational for the benefit of this nation. There is huge amount of opportunity that is waiting for us to exploit in the future. And also the case of GSLV, we had, of course, there were issues in the past, but I am very sure the full configuration which we all dreamt to make it operational 
is on the way and we are having the next launch of GSLV with a climate and weather observation satellite called Insight Radius that will be happening soon and after that the same rocket is bound to take the NISR, the uh, India NASA synthetic upper radar satellite as well. Coming months we are going to have launches in, of PSLV as well as GSLV Mark III and we are also getting ready to launch the test vehicle of the Gaganyan. Of course, the launches of further PSLVs and SSLVs in the offing. The Shah is our best with a lot of activities towards all of this. And here, Mr. Basu, I also want to take your opinion on the new Indian space policy, which was made public on April 20th this year and has said that the Indian space research organization, ISRO, will transition out from manufacturing operational space systems and focus its energy on research and development in advanced technologies. Uh, what is your views on the new space policy and how do you think it will strengthen the scientific fraternity and our research and development in near future of about 5 and 10 years? Well, actually, it is very difficult to forecast how things will change in the next five years or ten years. Because in every field, field of science especially, changes are taking place so fast and the changes are so revolutionary in some cases that it's not possible to focus what is going to happen in the next uh, five years or so. But we all know that efforts are being made to, you know, make these satellite systems more useful to the common man so that their full benefit can be accessed. Absolutely. And as we are taking the discussion forward, Mr. Basu, I want to understand from you that whenever we talk about uh, the developments of India and space sector, how potential we have in our scientists and researchers, what global standards and global innovations we are having in our country right now. How do you see India's image in the world uh, when we are leading in the space sector and the science and development? See, India is among the top most countries in the world in space research. That is accepted by everyone. And in fact, you know, in many of the foreign navigation systems and all, there are lots of Indians who are actually managing and controlling those shows. Absolutely. So, can we say that with the rise of reliability of word on India, be it in the space sector and with the commercial affordability and the success rate that we have in space programs, can we say that we are also emerging as a Vishwa Guru in science and research sector? So, that... See, India has been accepted as a major advancing scientific nation that the world recognizes because many technologies developed in India are used internationally now. So that way, India is quite up in the, in the field of science and technology. Absolutely. So we are emerging as a great alternative of reliable and affordable missions. Okay, I don't say alternative, but definitely a country which can reach very high levels. There are some technical details about the mission and if you can share your opinion on that. The new satellite had L1 frequency as an additional feature. Can you please explain to our listeners what this L1 frequency is? That L1 signals for better use in wearable devices. That is, can be used in devices which can be held in hand to have more easy portability. Because, you know, the L1 frequency is among the most commonly used in GPS system and will increase the use of this regional navigation system in wearable devices and personal trackers that use low power signal frequency chips. So this is more for easy portability. Absolutely. And with that note, we conclude the program. Thank you so much, Mr. Basu, for joining us on Akashwani. It was my pleasure. Thank you. You were listening to a discussion on successful launch of new navigation satellite, significance of NAVIC, or Navigation with Indian Constellation. The participants were Biman Basu, Science and Technology Expert, and Omvesh Upadhyay, Akashwani Correspondent. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of Akashwani. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of Akashwani. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on Air. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on Air Official. You may share your feedback about this program through email at airnsttalks at gmail.com or WhatsApp on 928 